So in behavioral political economy, we can really tie together the ideas of overconfidence from many insights in behavioral economics and try and tie it into Hayek's work, The Fatal Conceit. To finish off this little mini lecture series, I just have a few more inputs and a few things to wrap together uh, to talk about with The Fatal Conceit. The idea of the fatal conceit could be even larger uh, according to some behavioral economics research. Now, not all of this research is really validated, but we can think about how these things could be true. So the first is the kind of difficulty effect, the idea that overconfidence may be larger when a task is tougher. Tversky called this the difficulty effect or the hard easy effect. It's a cognitive bias that manifests itself as a tendency to overestimate the probability of one success at a task perceived as hard and to underestimate the likelihood of one success at a task perceived as easy. Now there is debated findings about these, but we can think about the overconfidence when a task is tougher as very much so pertaining to the fatal conceit as the idea of planning an economy is clearly a very tough task. And so if this evidence is actually true, it just kind of bolsters more of the evidence that we have put forward here about behavioral economics leading into this idea of the challenges of behavioral political economy. The second is this idea of overconfidence and the confidence spectrum. Overconfidence may be larger in areas where confidence is higher. So there's a number of studies that have shown this, uh, including, including a 2002 study, the role of individual differences in the accuracy of confidence judgments in the Journal of General Psychology. Uh, but this is showing the idea that uh, we have overconfidence more so when our confidence is higher. Well, if we think about this, economic prediction is both challenging and people are quite confident their views are correct. And so both of these lines of evidence would kind of bolster our fatal conceit, our overconfidence when it comes to political economy, ideas of politics, and our ability to construct our future, our economy. We have our political notions and we're very overconfident in them. Everybody else must be wrong, but our ideas, clearly they're right. These two concepts, while there's debated findings here, can kind of showcase how strong the fatal conceit could be. The fatal conceit is no minor irrationality. So we can bring all of this overconfident stuff together. We are both overconfident in understanding what causes us to get where. We're overconfident in that we know how to drive. We know how to move things forward. We know how to progress. And we are overconfident in understanding where we are going, that we know our destination. We know what the good outcomes actually are. We have an overconfidence in our ability to construct the economic world around us. We have a fatal conceit. In this case, seeing that we process information in this biased way, in this perhaps rationally irrational way, when we see this, this should make us less willing, not more willing to intervene within our economy, to try to construct utopia. Many findings in behavioral economics seem to go the other way. We see the irrationality and thus, then we say, ah, we have a, co a, a call for the government to step in and to try and construct you know, frameworks so that we achieve or at least aim towards rational choice. Here, what we see is the limitations of rationality in the political sector, a behavioral political economy. And in particular, here at the end, we show that we have both these versions of overconfidence and a fatal conceit in that ability to plan. But perhaps on a cheery note to end this off, we should be aware that perhaps this is not so bad. As Oliver Cromwell says, man never mounts higher than when he knows not where he is going. Perhaps we can allow spontaneous order to get us to a better place than we could even imagine. And we will get there in ways that we don't even understand.